So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go step by step mind movement meals. I think everyone here knows me, but my brand is Doxy Rich and I'm a wellness speaker. I write blogs on my website with tips to improve and maintain good health. I also have a YouTube channel, Doxy Rich 3 TV, where I have all kind of helpful videos on there for healthy living and healthy eating. You can also follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. I do presentations via videos, webinars, and conferences. And of course, I'm a, I have been a pediatrician for 33 years. I can't hardly believe that. And I'm a self-published author twice. So whenever I do any kind of presentation, I like to have learning objectives. And for this presentation, we're going to review ways to stay informed but not become overwhelmed by negative reports. We're going to devise plans to stay active while avoiding exposure to illness. And we're going to prepare food that will taste good but will also be good for your body. So the three M's for health are mind, where we want to be aware but cautious, movement, where we'll be active but safe, and meals that are delicious, but they're also nutritious. So the first thing we have is a positive mind. You want to stay positive. I have this little girl over here. She's jumping for joy. So we can't just depend on other people to keep us uh, happy and positive, but we also have to uh, surround ourselves with people that are positive. You don't want to surround yourself with people who drain you, who are always talking negative and, and doubtful and things like that. You don't want to surround yourself with that. So in order to stay positive, you keep yourself in a right frame and you want to be around people who are also uh, positive and can kind of help build you up. Next, uh, you have, um, you want to keep yourself uplifted. And you do that either through prayer, through reading uh, affirmations. You want to read uh, of course, those of us who are believers, we're reading the word of God and we want to keep our thoughts positive. And then I have the little music sign at the top because we also want to uh, keep our, you can play some praise music and just dance like nobody's looking and that'll definitely keep you uplifted. Lastly, you want to make sure that your mind is rested. When you don't have enough rest, you'll be anxious, you'll be uh, easily irritated, you'll uh, fly off the handle, you won't be nice and composed, so you want to stay rested. To have your mind rested, you want to make sure that you get six to eight hours of sleep every night. And if you can't, if you miss getting your six to eight hours of sleep two or three nights in a row, then you really need to get committed to getting six to eight hours. A bonus is, did you know that if any hours of sleep that you get before midnight, it actually counts in the body as if you're getting two hours of sleep. So if you go to bed at 10 p.m., by the time you get to midnight, even though that's two hours in your body, it's like you got four hours of sleep. So any amount of sleep that you get before midnight, it counts as double. So uh, on, But there's no such thing as catching up on sleep so that if you've done two and three hours of sleep three days in a row, if you sleep 10 hours the next day, it's not really like you can get that time back but it does help to get at least six to eight hours of rest each night. Another thing that helps you is to get a power nap. Good thing about a power nap is that it improves learning and memory. It prevents stress. It boosts your mood and creativity. It helps jumpstart your productivity and alertness, and it helps lower your risk for heart disease. Now, the thing is, though, you do not want to take a nap for longer than 20 minutes because that kind of defeats the purpose. So those are the three things we're doing for our mind, staying positive, staying uplifted, and staying rested. What we're going to do is we're going to do some deep breathing exercises. The way you do that, you want to sit nice and tall, and you're going to take a deep breath in. Draw your breath in, 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 in. You can even kind of feel your chest kind of expanding. And then you breathe out. And you want to do that through the nose. Breathe in and out through your nose. So you want to take a deep breath in. And then let it out through your nose. And you do that 
10 times in a row. So with movement, you want to keep your body active. And the key to that is you want to get ready. And then you want to get some kind of program or plan. And then you want to get going. Now, a lot of people get ready. They'll sign up for a club. They'll go buy some nice workout uh, uh, outfits and everything like that. But that's just the first step. Then you have to get a plan. You want to decide what you're going to do. And then after you do that, you want to get going. So the first step is getting ready. You want to commit to regular participation. You want to make sure you have comfortable shoes and clothing. And then you want to consider your location. Will you be getting your activity outdoors or indoors? Next, you want to get some kind of program. What do you plan to do? If you're indoors, will you be using a treadmill? Will you use an elliptical? Will you do some kind of floor exercises? Or, or you'll be outdoors, you're walking, running, jogging, riding a bicycle. And if you're riding your bike, I hope you have a bike helmet. Uh, you want to have some, or you're going to join some kind of schedule activity, either online Zumba or video or yoga, or you might go to a class, martial arts or, or aerobics. And then what I tell my patients, if you don't have any kind of organized activity, you can just put on some fast music and just do some freestyle dancing up to uh, uh, do three fast songs and try to do it for 35 to 60 minutes. The goal is you want to do 60 minutes of some kind of aerobic activity at least five days a week. The last thing to do is to get going. You want to plan your activities for at least five days a week. If you really want to get benefit, you have to be in constant motion. Just moving about once or twice a week, that's not going to get it. You want to make sure you're doing it at least five days a week. And then you want to participate for at least 60 minutes a day. Now, you don't have to do all the 60 minutes at one time. You can do one 60-minute session or two 30-minute sessions or three 20-minute sessions or four 15-minute sessions. So the key is you want to do 60 minutes of aerobic activity a day at least five days a week and then i always suggest that you want to do a, either have some kind of log to record and track your progress you know if you have a fitbit or something like that and even consider getting an accountability partner so that if you don't want to have to admit to somebody well it's been three weeks since i went walking it's been two days since i've done my workout so if you have an accountability partner that will help you stay on track our third section, which is meals. You want to be good to your body. You want to have the right food, the right portion at the right time. If any one of these are out of alignment, you might be eating healthy food, but still not getting the benefit. So let's look at that. The right food. If you're eating meat, you want to limit your meat content in your diet to 20 to 30% lean meat. And you want to have 70 to 80% vegetables and low glycemic fruits. What are low glycemic fruits? These are uh, fruits that have a lower sugar content. And uh, the, the uh, American Diabetes Association has set these guidelines and they came up with these, uh, with the uh, glycemic index score based on the, how quickly the carbohydrates that's in a particular food gets into the bloodstream and can affect the blood sugar. So when you're picking low glycemic fruits, you want to think of things like cherries, apricots, lime, lemon, grapefruit, peach, nectarines, dried apricots, uh, pears, apples, oranges, plums, and strawberries. 
Now, I just want to point out that if you eat a fresh apricot, it has a lower glycemic score of 23, where if you eat a dry apricot, the glycemic index score is 32. And the reason for that is when you have dried fruits like um, raisins or dried cranberries or dried apricots, a lot of times those, the sugars get concentrated and then so that they will taste good and have a good shelf life, they've even had sugars added. So a dried fruit will always be uh, higher than the natural fruit. And as you can see, the only berry that made the list was strawberries. All other berries and then your melons, mangoes, pineapples, all of those are very, they have higher glycemic index. So that would not be a good choice when you're, when you're picking your healthy foods for your diet. Uh, the other option is that if you have no meat in your diet, it's 100% plant-based. And they now even have plant-based food pyramids online so that you can have a good balanced plant-based diet. Some people hear plant-based and they think, okay, let me just start eating a lot of leafy greens or things like that. But no, you have to have a certain portion of legumes and protein. You can get plenty of protein from plant uh, sources, but you need to get the uh, plant-based food pyramid to make sure that you have a well-balanced and versatile diet. And then when you're eating the right foods so that you don't feel deprived, you can have two meals a week that you can have whatever you like. I always point this out when I'm working with my patients so that they don't hear, you can't have this anymore, you can't have that anymore. Because it has been shown that if people realize that twice a week they can eat whatever they like, whatever they like, they're more likely to stick to the eating the other foods that they should eat. For the rest of the week. Next, you want to have the right portion. Again, if you're eating healthy food, but you're not eating the right portions, that can also not, you won't get the same benefit. A lot of times people let their children eat cheese or milk because they say, well, cheese and milk, these are healthy foods. But if the child is drinking a gallon of milk every other day or eating an entire pack of string cheese for one snack, that is not good. That's a high fat snack. And plus, they can also a lot of times be anemic if they're not eating a balanced diet in terms of fruits, vegetables, meats, proteins like that. So when you get the, por the a portion, the best thing to do, especially if, if you're serving yourself out of a larger bag, is better to put it in a small bag or a small container. You see how they have this little uh, tray with the little a, hand, a serving, one ounce serving of almonds. And then once you have your small serving, you don't want to refill. If you keep refilling, that defeats the whole purpose and you're eating too much. And then the third thing is don't go for seconds. A lot of times more people are working at home now. So if you were to take your lunch to work, you would be limited. But when you're working at home, your refrigerator is right there. So you're ten tempted to go back and get seconds, but you have to make sure you don't do that. And then the most important, third most important is to eat at the right time. If you're eating too late at night, uh, if you're, uh, that's, a, that's not good for your digestion. The best time to have breakfast is about one hour after you wake up. So around seven to 8 a.m., and then it should, lunch should be about four hours after that, which puts you between 11.30 to 1.30, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then your dinner should be at least four hours after lunch, and it should be about three hours before you go to bed. So that will put you in, in the range between 5 to 7 p.m. So these are just the recommended times so that your body best digests and use the nutrients and the food that you are eating. So you must have the right food, eating the right portion at the right time. You have those three aligned, and then that will help you with your healthy eating choices. Now, as a bonus, I know that many people are working from home. So I put some tips in here for working from home. It's recommended that you do not wear your pajamas or lounging clothes because, again, remember we started this with mind. If your mind is in a relaxed mode, then it's not going to be focusing in like a business-like manner. 
So it's best to have on, uh, not, you don't have to work dress completely up like you're at work, but at least dressy casual so that your mind is thinking, I'm working, I'm at work. Then you wanna stick to your normal work hours. You will eventually be going back to work at your normal work hours. So you don't wanna get in the habit while you're at home as leaving everything until eight or nine o'clock at night and rushing to do it. When you go back to work, you'll have to have readjust to work in your normal work hours. So while you're working at home, you wanna stick to your normal work hours. You also would want to, uh, um, inform family members and friends that you're working at home. That way they don't call you when you're at home while you're doing your work. And then you want to communicate with coworkers and supervisors if there are any issues or concerns. For example, if you get uh, your three or four of you have a certain part to do in a project and you have to do your part and then pass it on to someone else. If something happens where you can't finish your part in a timely manner, then you need to notify your coworkers or supervisors that you're having difficulty or problem or you need help or something like that. Nobody, you're not down the hall or around in the next cubicle, so you'll have to make sure really uh, intentional about keeping in good communication with your coworkers or your supervisors. Next, if you're working at home, you want to decide what you need to accomplish for the day. Maybe at your particular job, they will send you things in your inbox or send you an email and say, hey, we need you to do X, Y, and Z. So you know what you have to do for the day and you have to plan your day to get that accomplished. You want to minimize interruptions or delays. Again, make sure your friends and your family know that you're working at home so they don't call you and interrupt you and while you're trying to complete your tasks or work. And then you want to have a designated work area. Again, we go back to the mind. If you have your designated work area, you're thinking your mind is in work mode and now you want to get everything done. You have what you need around you. You're not wasting a lot of time running, looking for this or that, misplacing files, uh, uh, things like that. So you want to make sure you have your designated work area. And then you want to avoid distractions. Don't keep going back to the kitchen, getting snacks. If you have a pet at home, you want to secure the pet. And make sure your pet's not jumping up on the table, spilling coffee on an important document or something like that. You, you're there on the computer, but you don't want to start searching the net, shopping on the net, things like that. If you have children, you need to arrange for child care so that your children are not just interrupting you and disturbing you while you're trying to get your work done. Especially if you have meetings or conference calls associated with your work, you want not have your children not, not disturbing that. And then again, I have the little phone there. You want to make sure that your uh, friends and family know that you're working so that they don't call you during your work hours. Now you want to stick to your goals for the day in a timely manner to get everything accomplished. You want to remain calm and adjust your actions when delays or interruptions occur. And then the good thing is at, at the beginning of your work time, you want to prepare your mind to begin work. And then at the end of the eight hours, you want to kind of wind down and say, okay, I'm finished for the day. So a bonus tip is you want to make sure that you stay hydrated. You can do this by drinking water or some kind of low calorie drinks. Like you see in the middle there, we have a little water that's flavored with a little mint and some lemon. Uh, or there's even foods like uh, cucumbers that are high water content, and that's a good choice. Some foods can even get, help you with your hydration. Next, you want to stay connected like we're doing. We're having this webinar, and then you can call people, just check on them and see how they're doing. Uh, have people doing like FaceTime or just a simple phone call. Hey, calling, checking to see how you're doing. So you want to stay connected over this period of social distancing just so we still uh, maintain communication with each other. And then the most important one is you want to stay hopeful. It, uh, don't want to uh, watch hour after hour after hour of news reports and who died where and how many people died and this and that and, and, and we're on lockdown and this and that. You want to make sure that you stay hopeful. Tell yourself, this is just a period. It will pass. Better days are ahead. Stay hopeful. Keep yourself, as we said, in a positive mindset. 
So at the end of this webinar, uh, I'm going to send everybody an email who attended because there are some perks for uh, being on this webinar. Uh, I have free books that you can, ebooks that you can download on my website, which is www.docsyrich.com. I have resources about healthy eating, uh, how to get started with exercise, even how to get flat abs without having to do crunches. I have about six uh, ebooks that you can download from my website. Also, you can get a 20 minute one on one information session via Zoom. Just send me an email. You want to set that up uh, within the next week. Just send me an email. And then a 20 minute information session via Zoom if you want to talk about different meal choices and suggestions. So just drop me an email. And there's my contact information. Uh, my website is www.doxyrich.com. You can get blogs and links to articles, and you can even subscribe to my website. Uh, you can download free ebooks, like I was saying, from my website. And then there's other resources on my website also. And then my YouTube channel, Doxy Rich 3 TV. Uh, I have helpful videos on there helpful uh, about healthy eating and healthy living. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell icon at the top so you'll be notified when I update my channel.